It eroded. It disappeared somewhere. Where did it go? Thus the name cognitive evaluation theory. DC says that in the case of the additive scenario, where we start getting rewards and positive outcomes and or negative outcomes based on our academic performance, that these start taking on um, increasing significance to us and obviously to everybody around us who are no longer in, you know, asking the question, gee, what did you learn in history today? It's more the question, what grade did you get in history today? <coughs> And so the emphasis starts to shift more and more towards the outcomes. And that draws us along with it. We're not super people. Most of us can't resist that. And then gradually, with that increasing focus, we begin to very gradually lose the intrinsic value of the activity. It starts to just simply erode from inattention. Until one day we find that school is the equivalent to work. A place where you go to produce outcomes and avoid other outcomes. And there is very little left in the behavior of education that is intrinsically inherently enjoyable to you. Now, when you have turned this into work, and most of us have managed to do it, and thankfully our society really helps, when it has turned into work, we can still have sufficient motivation to drive the model. After all, this is what a lot of our work and our life is going to be like. I mean, I even talk in, in you know, the, the um, development of humor. I, I talked about adult humor is often addressed to, you know, the, the, the workaday world and, and the general kind of outcomes that we see in our lives. And, and so things are tragic here. It, it's still enough to keep us coming to class, working hard, studying, getting grades, etc., etc. But you become a little more like the piano player in the other room um, with the person sitting over them with a hickory stick saying it's 12.15, start playing, and hitting your knuckles if you hit the wrong note, um, as opposed to being that person in the other room who is playing the piano because they absolutely love playing the piano. And so one of the sad ironies of turning play and pleasure, intrinsically pleasurable activities into work <laughs> that is extrinsically driven in eroding that pleasure, you also tend to diminish the, the, the sheer energy of the behavior. And most students, therefore, have their performance suffer. And, and again, if, if you look at two university students, one who is passionate about their stuff, the other one who finds it all drudgery, who are you going to put your money on when it comes to grade time? Now, this um, DC called the over-justification. And there can be an over-justification effect. If we have intrinsic value and extrinsic value just adds to it, the additive model, that's win-win. And, and, and you're off to the races. I mean, if you still have the passion of knowledge and education and studying and learning, um, and, you know, the rewards of getting good grades, I, I mean, you're flying hot, win-win. If you have the addition of the extrinsic, which subsequently erodes or undermines the intrinsic, you can still be in a win scenario. You have short-circuited yourself. You're no longer win-win. And you can still do very, very well driven by that motivation. In fact, that's the motiv motivational model for a lot of what we do in our lives. 
Anything we call work, basically. However, in some scenarios, there can be not only the erosion of intrinsic value, but in fact, some rather dire consequences. If this activity was almost wholly dependent on intrinsic value, and extrinsic incentives start coming along and accumulating, typically pretty good ones because I am passionate and driven, the intrinsic will erode and disappear. The extrinsic will be there and accumulate, but as the outcome expectation for those increases and increases. I'm pretty good. I, I'm a really good piano player. And, and I'm getting a lot of money now for my recitals. I'm teaching, the money's rolling in, the accolades, my photos, I've got albums, I have company musicians, blah, 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 blah. Everything is going wonderful. <coughs> what is the probability that I can generate a, a six-figure income from my piano playing? What's the probability I can cut another two albums? What's the probability that my recitals are going to be in demand and ticket prices high? It's going up and up and up and up. But as outcome expectations rise, the value of the outcome tends to diminish because it's becoming easy. It's easy to get recitals now and cut. Does that make something valuable? We tend to value things that are difficult. Do you value a diamond ring or a circonium ring? Chances are you value the diamond ring higher because diamond is harder to get, it's more expensive, it's more rare than circonium or whatever it's called. Fake glass. Well, I guess not fake glass, it's fake diamond. It's glass. And so the value begins to drop. Now, go back to the expectancy value calcul calculations. Even though expectancy is increasing and going up and up and up, for example, to 0.9, if value is dropping from, you know, 1,000 units, which would be a 900 motivational units, but if this is starting to drop and drop and drop, you know, now it's down to, I should have given myself something easier to do mathematically in front of people, uh, down to 100, it's now 90 motivational units. In other words, the extrinsic value is less and less capable of maintaining the behavior. It's losing its power. And as it begins to lose its power, what are you left with? The intrinsic's gone. <clears throat> and unfortunately, in a tragic irony, the intrinsic is what got you there. Started producing all of these highly valued, positive, external, extrinsic outcomes. And now when you need it most, it's gone. Sound familiar? That, of course, is psychological burden.